Let me get to Johnny Bench, the uh, Hall of Fame catcher. JB joining us now. Johnny, how you been, bud? I have been really good. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, this whole uh, home plate collision stuff and the decision by baseball that we're going to get rid of these home plate collisions. Uh, your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, my four-year-old just blew the whistle and said it's time to... <laughs> <laughs> what? It's Dan Patrick, okay? Don't you watch him? Of course you watch him. Uh, you know, I when when it happened... Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, good. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll go to school in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I uh, I was I was actually called by Bruce Bochy when it uh, a Buster got into the collision and he wanted me to do something and hopefully if I could help. I called Major League Baseball. They said, uh, "Well, we'll look into it," and that was uh, that was the end of that. I am just so happy that uh, something is being done. I, I talked about a zone. I talked about the fact that if you if the catcher has the ball by. A, Certain zone period that the, the player, the catcher, the runner has to slide. I've talked about you know what the collisions are below the waist. Uh, there's a lot of things that mm. uh, that are being looked at, and hopefully it's being implemented. But I, my thought was that I think we can get rid of a lot of the collisions if the catchers don't block the plate. If you block it, I, you're you're, you're taking away part of my advantage of getting to the plate. I have to slide around you, so I, I hold the catchers somewhat culpable with this. Well, I've, I've always trained my catchers in the way I learned a long time ago when I started using the one-handed glove for doing the swipe tag, and I would never stand in front of the plate. I, I tell my catchers, I said, never stand in front of the plate. You've got a guy 6'3", coming around third. He weighs 230 pounds, and he's uh, running like a linebacker. And if he can't see the plate, then he's going to go through you and over you. It, it doesn't really matter. So if you will show him the plate, he's always going to be on the uh, Sports Center, I mean, well, that's a bad word, and then our MLB, <laughs> and then, uh, he's, he, but he will get on the ground. And if I get him on the ground, I can take one step as I'm catching the ball, put my shin guard down, and I can tag him out. But then there's, there's just times when you can't. I mean, there's times yeah. when a ball came in down the left field line, it, it was seven hopper, I caught it, Gary Matthews hit me with his shoulder, crushed my AC joint, this was in April, I had six quarter zone shots every three weeks just to finish the season. And, and you live with the pain. You can't swing the bat. Uh, 75 was just not a great year for us, except we won the World Series. But how do umps enforce this? Well, they make, they make decisions all the time. I mean, whether it's a obstruction, whether it's – you can't run into a shortstop. You can't run into a second baseman. And so if, if these are part of the parameters, you know, there has to be a judgment. I mean, you've got officials in football that call, you know – uh, holding, you've got people that call unnecessary roughness. You got, you know, if if indeed that is the obstruction rule, then there's going to be a fine line. And yes, indeed, if you have a first base umpire, a third base umpire, and an umpire at home plate that see all of this, they should be able to make a call at that particular time. Other catchers uh, weigh in on, on this, uh, helping out with uh, the the commissioner uh, about, or former catchers, I should say. Uh, who else was uh, part of this? Uh, Mike Matheny, uh, Bruce Bochy, I'm sure there's some. I saw Bob Melvin had said that he didn't particularly like it. And again, if you 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 hit it right on the nail, uh, the nail on the head. If you do not stand in front of the plate, then the runner did. It. But if you've got a ball coming in and you have to step back in line, then that's that's a that's where you get into territory where you're going to get run over and and you know serious injuries. I mean, I've got 17 broken bones just from catching and and playing. And, you know, when you have to play as a catcher and you lose that catcher and he doesn't, you know, it's the small injuries that never, never show up that why you see catchers so often go through slumps. They go up and down and up and down. And a lot of it has to do with a foul tip off the shoulder, foul tip off the hand. But when you see guys like we saw in the World Series and we see guys just dead running over, but yeah. these guys, the catcher chose to stand right there in the middle of the, of the, of the line and they didn't have any other choice. But, I mean, when you cause damage, when you create something that causes concussions, and when you create problems with guys who are broken knees, broken legs, now we've got an issue that we have to deal with. He's Johnny Bench, Hall of Fame catcher joining us, Dan Patrick Show. But here's, here's what I want to know. If we take it to this level, because what is the punishment? I, I merely call you out, or do I have to implement something a little bit more severe to that with a fine or a suspension if you're going to get it through these runners' heads of we're serious about this, because if I just say you're out, 
I might take my chances of popping somebody if, you know, you got a marquee guy behind the plate. Well, if, if indeed you charge the mound, you're fined. You may be suspended. Yeah. If in, the, if in the presence of mind of the umpires, you were trying to cause harm, and yes, you have to try to knock the ball out of the catcher's hand. Yes, that you're trying to score, and it's, it's bang, bang. There's going to be plays where there is nothing that they can do about it. They're, they're, they can't possibly call it. But if a runner goes out of his way to get a catcher, then that's the decision that they're going to have to make. I just want one of your guys, you know, to like you stand in front of that basketball goal, which yeah. you are perfect and pure. Thank you. But I want you to stand there and then have somebody just charge you and run you right into the backboard, and then you come up and say, oh, I've got to finish the hour. But that doesn't normally go with the territory <laughs> here, Johnny. I, and you know what? I don't have to do that to know that that's really going to hurt. Do you have a chest protector? Uh, I do not. Okay. So go get a chest protector, and, and you th- they think that we have all the protection in the world. You've got a chest protector that's a piece of, of foam, basically, or whatever it is, a padding that you put in front of you, and these guys run right into your shoulders that's exposed. You've got a call that's making it at that same time that you have to catch the ball and turn, and boom, he's there. So it, it's going to be a decision. The umpires are going to have to all get together. There's going to go, they're going to go through issues. They'll go through every spring training and tell every player there will be a meeting that here's what's allowed. They will show plays. I'll guarantee you they'll have hundreds of videos. This is not going to be allowed. Okay, but this don't they okay. call it tools of ignorance when, you, when you're a catcher? Wait a minute. Isn't it called tools of <laughs> ignorance, Johnny? <laughs> well, it was until I started catching no. Oh, I see. I see. You up the baseball IQ here? <laughs> well, I was smart enough to use a one-handed glove. I was smart enough to start using the helmet first, and I was smart enough to protect myself in every way that I possibly could from these guys, these goons that are running over <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, you, have, you have a four-year-old? Four and seven, yeah. Oh yeah Justin God. hit 14 home runs last year. So <laughs> we're gonna, he's, he's already in the draft, I think. Is he going to catch? No. There you go. Well, Look, maybe with this new rule. But... I, I, but <laughs> He's going to be a hurler or a first baseman. I mean, with that kind of power. Uh, but he likes soccer, so I, I don't know what I'm going to talk him into. If he, but he'll decide. <laughs> well, it's uh, always good to talk to you. And, Thank uh, you, Dan. Yeah, and all. Uh, are, are you in the car- carpool here? You're taking your uh, your kids to school. I take them to school. Look I pick at them you. up most of the time. It's uh, it's heaven on earth. Any other Hall of Fame dads that do that in the school? Actually, Don Sutton's daughter is a junior or a senior. Oh, okay. And Steve Garvey is down the way when he has, I don't know how many he still has. But I mean. <laughs> father-son <laughs> game should be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like being in a wheelchair in a father-son game. A- how big there. are Garvey's forearms? Any bigger or are they uh, you know, a little he's bit? He's shrinking. I mean, he's getting like Yogi. He's shrinking down, but he's still in great shape. He's got uh, a whole bunch of stuff where he works with the Dodgers. He does things out in uh, Palm Springs where he has uh, softball and baseball uh, uh, classes. and, and, uh, and His hair and, looks good, though, right? God, I mean, he still looks like a Dodger, though. <laughs> does that bother you? Well, it does. I mean, it's just too good. You know, they always, I was always married to their organization because they were always clean. They were always good. They always presented themselves. But it's like, I mean, I can't keep wearing these shirt, cashmere's with the arms tied in front of my the sweater in front of me and everything else. But he's quaffed every day. It's beautiful. He's a great guy, man. He does a lot of good. Yeah, those were great rivalries. That was that was a lot of fun. I, I mean, I, I love the Pittsburgh Reds rivalry. Yes. I thought that that was that was great, and the Dodgers were always you know very very competitive. But you guys Nobody against Pittsburgh, knew how good the Pirates were. I mean, really, because we beat them. But I mean, they were they were unbelievable. They were a great team, and we and and they'll never get the recognition I think that they deserve. But I think I can go down the starting lineup with that team. Really? I think you got uh, Manny Sanguian, Bob Robertson, Rennie Stennett, yes, uh, Gene Alley. Yeah, he was there until uh, the other guy took over. Uh, Go ahead. Let me Richie see. Hebner. Richie Hebner at third. Um, you had Al Oliver in center. Yeah, boy. Pop Stargell. Oh. And who did I need in left field? Uh, well, Parker was there, but uh, Stargell eventually played first base. So, he did. 
Um, I don't know who else I'm missing there, but that that's a pretty far, you know Clemente was there back in the uh, early seventies. They had a lot of talent, man. They had a lot oh, of they talent. Did. I played yeah. with Roberto down in Puerto Rico in the winter leagues. And is anybody? He would, do, he would, do, he do would s- lay on the training table. My neck healing me. <laughs> My back is killing me. And then the game would start, and he'd be jumping and leaping tall buildings with a single bound. Well, remember when he'd go to the plate, though, Johnny? He would always he'd always be messing with his neck. Every, oh, yeah. My neck, oh, killing me all the time. I can't help it fit it. Oh, do you see Yusil Puig? Do you see any Clemente in Yusil Puig? You know, I see a little bit of maze, actually. You know, the way he catches the ball and stuff? That's pretty good. I mean, and, of course, <laughs> when he turns and throws it, it's all Clemente. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a sight to see. I just hope this young kid gets his feet underneath him because, I mean, he would be so good for baseball. Guys like that and Trout and, you know, you see people like that and you know how good baseball still is. All right, I'll let you be father of the year. Uh, always good to visit with you, Johnny. Thank my you, bud. My pleasure, my friend. Thank all right, you. Johnny Bench, right. Hall of Fame catcher. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.